YouTube, welcome back to the channel. We're back and we are checking out IGN's top 10 fighting games of all time. IGN do lists like this quite often. Uh, recently in the year, they did the best top 10 games of all time, which uh, threw up a little bit of controversy. So I'm very interested to see what the top 10 fighting games are. Uh, there's a few in here which I think should be in here, whether they appear or not is a different kettle of fish. Uh, I'm not sure whether they're going to go off nostalgia. I haven't watched the video yet, so it's going to be interesting for a first take. So we're going to jump in and uh, let's see where we start. Prepare to strike now. Fighting games have a special place in both the past and present of gaming. It's a genre that requires quick thinking, twitch reflexes, and vast amounts of knowledge of both yourself and your opponent's options to play at a high level. It can often seem intimidating, but some of the most recognizable series in pop culture, such as Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, <laughs> belong to that same genre. So for our deliberations in assembling this list, we've laid out some special criteria. We've excluded platform fighters such as the Smash Brothers series, Good. as that's important enough to be a list on its own. We only have one game representing each series and while legacy can play a big part they must offer robust mechanics interesting already so they've disqualified smash brothers from it which i think is absolutely correct it's more like an arena sort of fighter i would not like a classic fighting game as you would say and also very interesting they have only included one game from each genre which means that we're going to get 10 different fighting games we're going to get no repeat so we're not going to obviously get if there's a versus game in here say we're not going to get an x-men versus street fighter and an, a marvel like a mvc2 mm, which has already upset me a little bit and also it's going to be very interesting uh if we're going down the street fighter route for me the original street fighter 2 has to be in here for the nostalgia groundbreaking what it brought to the fighting game community and back to people back to the arcades and obviously we wouldn't have some of these games today if that hadn't taken off so it's going to be interesting which street fighter game they're going to put in here obviously you've got third strike massive massive popular street fighter game and also some of the uh like we've obviously got Garou, Mark of the Wolves here playing in the background that could be in there but obviously are they going to just go with a KOF game and which KOF game they're going to go for Let's find out. Mechanics and still be fun to play today. Here's our list of the top 10 fighting games. It's going to be interesting. Number 10. He must win. Mortal Ugh. Kombat 9 marked a turning point in the history of MK. It was a reboot, not just of its story, but of everything that defined Mortal Kombat over the years. Puzzle combat, motor combat, and weird creative fatalities were all gone in lieu of a back-to-basics approach that focused on the actual combat above all else. It turned out to be the best possible decision for the series, because Mortal Kombat 9 brought the legendary fighting series back from the brink, thanks to its excellent story mode, copious amounts of fan service, and redone mechanics that laid the foundation for subsequent games to follow. It certainly was not the most balanced fighting game in the world, but that was part of its <laughs> charm. And its imperfections are actually one of the reasons why many fans still prefer MK9 over 10 and 11 to this day. Interesting, if we were picking a Mortal Kombat, I think I would have gone for Mortal Kombat 2. I think the jump from MK2 to MK1 was very significant. Great roster, great mechanics. Obviously, we're going into the realms of like the 3D games when we're talking about the Mortal Kombat reboot. Obviously, I weren't expecting the latest Mortal Kombat to be in here, but <clears throat> I'll give it its dues. Uh, but I would have liked to have seen MK2. You are not ready for what Number you nine, Skullgirls. Well, it's great seeing indie games. Even game just in a here. passing glance at Skullgirls in motion will tell you that this isn't your average indie fighting game, but there's more to Skullgirls than just its looks. Skullgirls has one of the most flexible fighting game <clears> systems <throat> ever made. Every character has a ton of different combo routes, and you can play as a solo character with increased health and damage, great a game. balanced duo team, or fill up your squad with three characters that are weaker, but offer the advantage of extra assists and combo extensions. Add in memorable character design, art style, and music on top of silky smooth gameplay and net play and it's no wonder Skullgirl still thrives 10 years later i like how he's just made a point there of the net play <clears throat> obviously this game has gone on massive game to say it's come from an indie developer and like they say you wouldn't think looking at it and the way it plays that it would be an indie game great game and it's been a massive evo tournament game for what last five six years 
And they keep supporting it, adding more and more. I think there's some new characters coming out for it. I think they announced it at Evo. So it's great to see a game like Schoolgirls getting in there. It's go time, baby. Ooh, ultimate showdown. Virtua Fighter V Final Showdown was the final arcade and console iteration of Sega's premier 3D fighter, and Ultimate Showdown rebuilt the game on Yakuza's Dragon Engine for modern consoles. Often credited with greatly influencing or even creating the 3D fighter genre, Virtua Fighter is foundational to video games. The likes of Yu Suzuki, creator of Shinmu and Space Harrier, and Toshihiro Nagoshi, longtime head of the Yakuza series, helped craft a series focused on grounded martial arts, vast movement, attack, and counter options, and characters that became instantly iconic. Virtual Fighter 5 represents the peak of this design, with gameplay that still feels true to its roots, yet distinct from any other fighter out there, and improves on the series' online features. And although some single-player offerings have been removed <coughs> from earlier versions of Virtual Fighter 5, Ultimate Showdown is the easiest way to play the latest entry on modern hardware. With incredibly high ceilings for execution, such as moves that require input windows as small as 1 60th of a second, and characters that are fun to just mash buttons on, Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown is a must-play for fans of 3D fighters and the genre as a whole. Virtual Fight 5, yeah, Ultimate Showdown was the one what they released recently. Me and Steve played quite a lot of it, and we did both agree that the online was superb. Matchmaking was great on it. Uh, never been a massive fan of Virtual Fighter. As they say in this, I always found it a little bit too complex. I was more of a 2D kind of guy. But again, Virtual Fighter 2, on the other hand, uh, the difference between that and Virtual Fighter 1 was worlds apart, which I'm surprised... That might not have got a mention in here, but it is. This is a great game, and it is possibly the most polished and final version of a virtual fighter game you're going to get. So, yeah. Better We're not doing bad too far. Killer Instinct. 2013's Killer Instinct proved the series was more than the Mortal Kombat imitator some claimed it to be. It was one of the first mainstream fighting games to integrate rollback netcode, and its online play is still among the smoothest around. Its dojo mode is the best teaching tool the genre has ever seen. It doesn't just teach you how to play Killer Instinct, it teaches you how to play fighting games, full stop, and is required reading for anyone trying to learn the genre. What's more, Killer Instinct is packed with great single-player content, and no matter how you yeah. play it, it looks great and has a killer soundtrack by Mick Gordon. But whether you're yelling along with the announcer while pulling off an ultra combo, landing a perfectly timed combo or counter breaker, or just learning a new character in training mode, Killer Instinct feels great to play and has the technical depth any great fighter needs while remaining unique. Now, if only Microsoft would release a sequel. Oh dear, I've just got a snippet of that, but let's talk about uh, KI. Uh, great game. The originals were great when they first came out arcade and then got ported to the uh, Super Nintendo. Uh, the one what came out there on the Xbox, was it 2013? Great technical game, great graphics, great roster. As they say, rollback netcode introduced in it. The online was fantastic on it. I'm really glad they've uh, put Killer Instinct in there because I think it is a game what is iconic, definitely in the genre. Uh, definitely deserves to be up there in the top 10. Now this is controversial for me. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is set apart by its Especially character Especially if we're only going to get one vs. game. team construction. Many of the characters are broken Which in a way that only Marvel can get away with. They did being say able to start. put three of these characters together, each with one of three assist options in varying orders, creates a sandbox of possibilities. You can be in complete control as you perfectly execute an infinite combo one game, and question your life decisions as you're stuck blocking Soul Fist non-stop without having a chance to move the next game. You can start a game off with a mix-up leading to a death combo, mix up your opponent's next character into to another death combo and make one execution error on their third character just to watch your whole team die to a level 3 x-factor comeback it's brutal and unforgiving but that feeling of being all powerful is worth it it's fast flashy and the combo system is ridiculous it will garner your attention and take you for a ride oh next up kof 13 let's just touch on the last game a little bit um ultimate marvel versus capcom 3 wow for all the versus games what they've brought out over the time how is mvc2 not in there for what it's done for the community uh everything it did at evo big tournaments big game massive roster yeah completely unbalanced but so is like they say uh mvc3 personally 
I would have loved to have seen X-Men versus Street Fighter in there, which is the crossover game which started them all off. That is my personal opinion of one of the greatest fighting games of all time. I don't think Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3 should have been in there in terms of what the others have done for the community, even Marvel versus Capcom 1. Interesting, uh, interesting pick that they've gone for that. This is looking good though. Uh, number five, if they're going for a King of Fighters game, they've gone for the King of Fighters 13, which for me, when I played it, absolutely blew my mind. It is possibly the best looking animated 2D fighter. Unbelievable graphics, presentation, great gameplay. Went a little bit too technical for me, if you compare it to some of the older ones and what's come after it. I don't know if they sort of realised that and just watered it down slightly. But what a fantastic game. If anyone wants to play a King of Fighters game, I would definitely say play King of Fighters 13. Uh, it's interesting how they've sort of not even thought about, well, obviously the other games like KOF uh, 98, is it 2001 or 2002, uh, which is a very popular one, but... Yeah, I'm happy with uh, 13. Let's see what they've got to say about this one. The King God, of Fighters series has a number of good entries, with many choosing 98 and 2002 as their favorites, and 15 receiving a lot of love as the newest entry. However, for our money, it's KOF 13 that remains one of the best fighting games of all time. The super detailed pixel art, pace of play, and hyperdrive combo system all helped KOF have a resurgence in the competitive and casual fighting game scene that continues to this day. And although the infamously difficult combo trials remain, they're not even necessary to use while playing. The characters, team-based combat, and beautiful animation keep this particular king on the throne what a game number four dragon ball fighter z not only is Dragon Ball Fighters finally a good Dragon Ball poor, game, poor but it's an amazing fighting game in its four. own right. The first thing you'll notice is the presentation. It is absolutely stunning to look at, and the sounds of haymakers, super dashes, and energy beams give the action the punch it really needs. You can freeze nearly any frame, and you might think it's straight from the anime. Combine its presentation with a deep roster of fan favorite characters, yeah, great roster. Free, free tag system, an approachable auto combo system that makes doing flashy combos easy for beginners, and you have one of the most fun to play fighting games in recent memory with competitive legs that still endure to this day. And with the recent announcement of rollback netcode, Dragon Ball Fighters has a very bright future ahead of it. Now you see, if it had got rollback netcode at the start, I could have possibly understood it, but it's not n until now, well, a little bit in the future, that we're going to get rollback netcode for Dragon Ball Fighters. But the game does look <clears throat> absolutely unbelievable. The presentation, flashy, great right character roster, I wouldn't personally have put it in my top 10. Uh, it is a great game. I appreciate it, but it's interesting that they've got it so far up there. Good old Tekken. Controversial. Tekken has always been known as one of Tekken the most three. difficult fighting game franchises. Tekken 3. Its 3D movement adds layers of complexity. There are over 50 characters each with well over 100 moves apiece, and the simple act of moving backwards properly requires practice. Its depth and complexity make it every bit as demanding as it is rewarding, and those who put in the time will be rewarded. What sets Tekken 7 apart from other entries in the series, and earns it a spot here, is how much it improved in accessibility without cutting back on its depth. The series returning to 1v1 from the 2v2 format in Tekken Tag Tournament 2 cuts the amount of moves you need to remember in half, but all of the characters individually are just as complex as they were, if not more. Rage Arts and Rage Drives are exciting comeback mechanics but will never beat out solid play. And while the slow-mo finishers don't change much of anything to the gameplay, they have created some of the hypest moments in tournaments. Tekken 7 hits the balance of attracting a new audience without alienating hardcore fans perfectly. Tekken 3 all the way for me. Sorry. It's one of the greatest fighting games of all time. Possibly should have been at number one uh, for how groundbreaking it was, taking the genre where it was, how it looked, how it played. Even to the home console, PlayStation 1 uh, was virtually arcade perfect apart from having the 3D backgrounds. So for me, Tekken 3 would definitely would have been my Tekken that I would have put in the, uh, in the top 10. Wow, Guilty Gear Strive at number 2. The Guilty Gear series has been pumping out excellent fighting games for more than two decades, but Guilty Gear Strive is where Arc System Works' flagship title finally found mainstream success, and for good reason. Strive sports the best rollback netcode in the business. 
something that was largely unheard of in a mainstream fighter even a few years ago. But good netcode alone does not a great fighter make. Strive also refined the series' notoriously technical gameplay, making it easy to pick up and understand without losing the depth or the diversity of Guilty Gear's Gonzo cast. Every single one of Strive's 20 characters, whether it's series Poster Boy and Rushdown Monster Soul Bad Guy, or the coffin-swanging Gold Lewis Dickinson, plays completely differently from one another. So there's an enormous amount to learn and discover even if you only play a single character. Add in Roman cancels, which lets you cancel any action into another action, and Strive has an almost limitless level of player freedom and expression. Combine all that with an excellent story mode, detailed teaching tools, tons of concept art and customization options to unlock, a rockin' soundtrack spanning nearly every game in the franchise, and some of the most impressive visuals in the genre, and it's easy to see why Strive has taken the fighting game community by storm. Okay, we're going to pause it there because it's going to be interesting to see what number one is here because we haven't actually had a standalone Street Fighter game yet. We've had a versus game with Street Fighter in, but not a standalone, so I'm presuming it's going to be a Street Fighter game for number one. But let's just talk a little bit about Guilty Gear Strive. For me, it is possibly one of the best fighting games I have played in easily the last five, six years. They hit the nail on the head there. Unbelievable graphics, but not only that, the gameplay to go alongside with it. It's fluent, it's quick, it's easy to pick up. Uh, having been someone what's only ever watched watched Guilty Gear being played before and it looked quite complicated, I was always a little bit worried to pick the series up. Guilty Gear Strive is actually the first Guilty Gear I've actually played and I absolutely loved it. I wish I'd got a little bit more time to play it because I absolutely loved playing it online as well. Played hell of a lot of matches online. Definitely deserves to be in the top 10. Not sure it would have been at number two, but I'm more than happy that that's where it is. Yeah, hats off to Arc System Works. They really created something special, I feel, with Guilty Gear Strive. Brilliant game. So, this is going to be interesting now. Oh my life, we've got a peek. <gasps> Picking a single game They've to gone third strike. the storied fighting game Unbelievable. franchise was a tough ask. After all, Street Fighter 2 popularized the genre when it hit arcades in 1991, and Street Fighter 4 resurrected it when it hit home consoles in 2009. But Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is something special. It gave us Evo Moment 37, the Daigo Parry, and inspired an entire generation of players. But there's so much more to it than that. The sprite work is still some of the most beautifully animated around. The background's ooze style, and the jazz-inspired soundtrack features some of the best music music in any fighting game. Even the roster, underappreciated at the time because of how few characters carried over from Street Fighter 2 and how weird several of the characters are, holds up remarkably well with options to suit any playstyle. But the real highlight is the parry system. Yeah, the decision definitely. to make any attack, from Hadoukens to Super Arts parryable, adds almost limitless depth to a series already renowned for it, while keeping it fairly easy to pick up and play for newcomers. Third Strike showed us what was possible, bringing the genre's most important series up to speed with its contemporaries while simultaneously elevating it to new heights. More importantly, all of it holds up today, something most games from 1999 can't say, and recent re-releases even support rollback netcode. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is, quite simply, the greatest fighting game ever made. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is the greatest fighting game ever made. There is some words what I thought I would never hear IGN say. It's a very... Dis My only major concern with this entire top 10 is that they've had to go with one game from each genre. Because for me, as I said at the start, the original Street Fighter 2 was so groundbreaking and boosted the genre of fighting games into the mainstream, people back into the arcades, what it did for the arcades back in the day for me, would have had to have been in it somewhere in the top 10, even though it's possibly not played as much now. But Third Strike, deservedly, would also be in there. So it, I can see why it's been a tough choice to pick between possibly one or the other. But Third Strike is, for me, possibly... Well, I wouldn't even say possibly. For me, is the greatest standalone Street Fighter game not including the Versus series. Great mechanics, the parry system, which absolutely changed it up, the artwork, the 
absolutely amazing sprite animation which is second to none possibly very close would have to be Garou Mark of the Wolves which was sort of SNK's rival to it at the time but Third Strike absolutely even though it back in the day it wasn't probably received as well as what it is it sort of became a cult classic and then on we gave us Evo moment with that, the Daigo parry which shot fighting games into the mainstream and since then it's now an esport you know, you've got the Evo tournament, thousands and thousands of people coming to watch people play fighting games. Third Strike, yeah, absolutely. I'm very surprised they put it at number one. I didn't think it would have been number one, but for me, it probably would have been up there as number one. Either that, Tekken 3. Um, let's just see what they finish with here. And there you have it, our choices for the top 10 fighting games of all time. Which games do you think belong on the list? Make sure to let us know in the comments below. And for everything else gaming, you're already in the right place. IGN. Okay, so games I think would have should have been in the list, I would have put Tekken 3 instead of the current version of Tekken. I would have put MK2 in there. Uh, the versus <clears throat> sorry the versus game what they put in there was a was probably the strangest one out of them all for me uh personally i would have gone with the next men versus street fire that's personal though as it's my favorite fighting game as a whole across the board of the fgc i think you would have had to have gone with mvc2 for what it means to so much people uh and it's no you know it's known throughout the community as possibly being the best best versus game and most played versus game However, I would have also liked to have seen Soul Calibur in there. Another groundbreaking game where arcade graphics finally came home to the home system and in fact bettered it. The Dreamcast version of Soul Calibur is possibly one of the best fighting games I've ever played. Uh, silky smooth, amazing visuals, an all-round great fighting game. And as I say, I think in the genre, a standout fighting game. It was coming out around about the same sort of time as, you know, like your Tekken games. And when 3D fighters were starting to really take off, Soul Calibur, absolute amazing game. Uh, is there any others in there what I think would possibly... I think most of the others in there are pretty decent calls. I like it that School Goals got in there. It's great that an indie developer, indie developer sorry, gets great recognition for a great game. So for this one, IGN, I don't think you've did a bad job. There's a few ones in there what I'd switch around and probably change position of. Could have been a lot worse. <coughs> but uh, hey, IGN, done as proud with number one. Peace. We'll see you in the next one. Just one thing I want to say. Fighting game is something so great.